Annual both. Uh, as always, uh, well, the the both coordinator will be Gregor Herman, who's been a part of the Pearl team for many many years, and uh, the, the the stage is yours. Thank you, Gunnar. Um, maybe to start with, Gunnar is also the person who brought me to the package Pearl group. It was quite typical. I asked if someone would like to upload a. Pearl package and Gunnar was, ah, why don't you join the group? Come in, it's so nice. And that's why I'm still here. Unfortunately, Gunnar is not anymore in the Pearl group. Anyway, <clears throat> welcome, thanks for coming. Um, this is really supposed to be a buff, that's why I'm not on the stage. So it's about discussing uh, topics related to the package Pearl team. I'd like to <clears throat> start with a small kind of introduction round. I guess there are some other people from the group following at home, looking at, this, at the streams and on IRC. So maybe we can have a very short round where those who feel like it say their name and wave into the camera so that the ones following at home get a face to the nick. Yes, I'm Ansgar and well, I'm in the Pearl Group for, I think, two years now or so, or three, I don't know. Um, well, and I wrote the new PET, so if you have any problems with it or questions about it, you can talk to me. Tell us what language you wrote it in. Well, it's now written in Python, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my name is Damian. What about me? I was some driving force in the past for the package power group, but well, that function is now very nicely taken from Gregor. Thank you. And well, that's it. Uh, I'm David Bremner. I'm somehow mostly just lurking in package Pearl these days, but at the moment I'm more involved than before because I'm working on the Git migration, which we'll talk about a bit later. Hi, my name is Autore, and I'm too involved in Pearl Group, mainly packaging. <laughs> <coughs> Hello, I'm Tim Diaglis. I'm not involved anymore. I used to be <laughs> really active, but my name is Renema Jorga. So. <laughs> I'm Chris Butler, or Crispy. Um, I do some packages occasionally. Um, hi, I'm Axel Beckert. I accidentally jumped into this buff two years ago, and that's the way I joined here. And yeah, I think I'm not very active except maybe in IRC. I'm Zlatan Todoric, I'm a Debian new maintainer for a few days and I'm just lurking with which packages should I work. Okay. Definitely Pearl. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely the nicest group. That's very true. My name is Gavrilo, I'm a beginner in the Pearl and I want in the future to make packages of modules for Pearl. Cool. Greetings everyone, my name is Philip. I have programmed some software with Perl, so <coughs> I'm not a developer nor, ma nor a maintainer, so I'm just here to listen. Thank you. Hi, my, na my name is Maria. I'm also a lurking kind of a newbie in Perl, so... Seems we have a nice mixture of... Hello, my name is Marcelo, and uh, I don't know Pearl, so that's it. <laughs> well, uh, uh, my name is Magnus, and I like Pearl. I think uh, that should be enough to qualify to be here. Right. Hello, I'm Tincho. <clears throat> I used to be active in the Pearl group a few years ago. 
And now I'm trying to get back. Okay. <clears throat> uh, thanks so far. Do we know from IRC who is watching? No, we don't. <laughs> okay. If good. somebody can relay from IRC. Uh, yeah, I've, I've asked them already. Oh, good. Okay, some, some details. The, well, kind of agenda is on this wiki page. Here on the top, it's the page where, where we collect things to discuss and things to work on during the year and then, well, <laughs> either someone works on it or we discuss it here. Uh, on IRC there's this StepConf round room, but I guess the Perl people will still hang out in Debian Perl. Hmm? Okay, the video is for the people watching at home. And I hope that a few people have already found this copy instance in order to, <coughs> to take notes. Good, switching to the Switching to the agenda, I'd like to start with this second <coughs> uh, point. Those of you who follow the mailing list already know about it. It is the idea to write in our internal group policy which of the tests that are shipped with a package should actually be run during build time. That was sometimes not really clear which of the maintainer, release, something, test should be run. So I've written a um, <coughs> proposal and sent it to the list, I think, twice. I guess, uh, whoops, I guess the people following the list already know it and it's probably a bit too long to to read it in <coughs> in detail now. The general idea is yes, we want to run as many tests as possible, except the tests that are explicitly marked by upstream as uh, release tests or author tests. And of course we cannot run the tests that need internet access during package build. And is there something else essential? I think that's, that's the general idea. So this is the last chance to say something against this proposal, otherwise I will commit it now. And we can tick it off. Um, so s some packages have pod coverage tests which aren't marked as release tests, so we run those ones. Do, do, we, do we run pod coverage tests that aren't marked as, as released, uh, release testing? Yeah, I think the, the, the idea is run what is being run automatically, but don't explicitly enable <coughs> release tests. Okay. And have, have we compared how this matches up with the um, quality, um, the CPAN testing service? Yeah, I, th I think the the newer approach in CPAN modules is to, to use this environment variables release testing, which is not supposed to be run during the, the, the smoke tests or the, the well, CPAN install tests, so that's the same. I've also compared it with the Fedora Perl packaging policy, and it's the same too. Not that it matters, but it was interesting to compare it and to get some ideas. So. Um, with my packages, which are at least one of them is quite Perl related, WML. I try to enable the tests and notice that uh, because of embedded code copies, uh, the tests basically failed. So um, because I don't build them and I remove them from the tarball. So do we have any packages which have embedded code copies in there? <coughs> hardly, hardly any. There are some, some few packages that have some, some test modules. I mean, if it's easy, we try to, to use the, the version in Debian. But it's, it's not a real problem in my experience. Okay. There was some years ago a 
big uh, integer number library, uh, number library which had a lot of uh, well uh, mathematics extensions which did embed uh, some libraries with minor changes i think we 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 got it out in the end because it was too problematic yeah yeah but that's not that was not related to the test as the general question can we use this uh, how do we deal with it okay so, I guess this means hmm? Yeah, I know, but I have no idea how to change this in UXVT. It's it's just a comma. Yeah, yeah, sure, but <laughs> No. For readers following the stream, it says SVN commit message policy amendment for test suits. <laughs> Thank you, Gunnar. <clears throat> the people on IRC will, will see the commit message at some time. I don't know what it's waiting for. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. yeah but, um, <laughs> right. <clears throat> exactly. Good. Yeah, m maybe we change the, the, the order a bit to get it more into the order of importance. So yeah, one interesting thing is the migration from subversion to Git, which where the discussion started in, I think, 2008 in, in winter, so that was in August, in Mar del Plata. Since then, several people said they would work on it. And, well, finally, there is quite a lot of work happening, thanks to a few people in the room. And I think we're almost there. And I would like to ask David to give a summary of the status quo as of one minute ago. <laughs> Well, not much has changed in the last 10 minutes. So, <laughs> because I'm paying attention to the boff instead oh. of hacking. So, you know, progress stops. Um, so it's going OK. Uh, I guess you can see in the Gobi instance, uh, a URL, well, uh, it's an SSH style pseudo URL for uh, some test. You can look at uh, some repositories, uh, which I converted um, using this SVN all fast export tool that uh, the KDE uh, people originally developed. It's a C++ tool, uh, so I can even worse than Python, maybe. Um, but it's much, much faster than Git SVN. Uh, it takes about an hour to convert our entire six gigabyte SVN repo and it makes a total of uh, I think 1.3 gigabytes worth of uh, Git repositories. So that part is I think working quite nicely. We have a few uh, issues that uh, I mean essentially it's quite usable in the current state but we want to make it nice. Uh, and there are some packages, for example, dhmakepearl, Gunnar, and you probably forgot, but in 2006, Gunnar created this in the slash tools directory, and so the initial conversion missed, you know, the first few commits of that. And similarly, we had a few packages renamed. It's, it's something that happens from time to time, and uh, just this morning, this sort of dawned on us that maybe we should... Uh, so currently, what we have, if you, if you look at those packages, uh, you'll see the history since the rename. And that's not ideal, so uh, it shouldn't be too hard to fix. Uh, not to put any pressure on Salvatore, but Salvatore is going to give me a list of renames, and then we have more or less the technology. So, I mean, I, I'm happy to go into more details of, of how this is working, but I think that the high-level view is that uh, we're pretty close, and I think we're quite confident that Gregor is confident we'll have this done by the end of the day, and I'm confident we'll have it done by the end of DevCon. <laughs> so, 
you can find out which one of us is uh, less wrong. Less wrong. <coughs> yeah, Axel. Thanks, David. Just one question because I'm, I noticed that big Git repositories can be an issue. Do we will use submodules for that? Uh, as far as I understood it, it, it's all separate repositories for the packages. So, so every package is a one small Git repo and typically they have maybe 30 revisions in them. They're, they're very tidy. Um, but as far as having something cohesive to, to manage our entire set of packages, which is something we do as a team, I know that Gregor and Dam and Ansgar have been working on nice configurations using Joey Hess's uh, MR tool to check out all the packages and uh, do your commit and, and take them all. And I think that's, Dam, you have mostly documented that, how to use MR at this point. Is it pushed yet or not? Uh, it's in your head or? It's okay. It's in Dam's head, but it's also on the website. So, so very good. If there is some problem with the workflow, which is described on the website, blame me and, well, tell me about it so I can fix it probably. So the, <clears throat> the documentation for using Git is on our, our website in Git HTML. Uh, well, yes, it's probably not not really complete, not really finished. But I know there are quite a few people who actually know how to use Git, not not like me. So Tim or some Jon or so. So please improve it. The, the, the page actually is still in SVN. I hope you don't mind editing it there. But <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that, that's the next. That's the next step. But as as we and commit and git commit, it feels very very similar. Uh, just okay. A uh, one blocker for quite some time was was pet the package entropy tracker, because the first version was. Uh, did you want to say something, Gardens? So what we, we are also using MR, and what we did, we have the MR config still in SVN. So you can actually check out or have, you already have your checkout, and then if you do the conversion, just everything vanishes without, except the MR config, and you do MR update and you're fine. Yeah, we have it now in a, in a um, Git repository called Meta, Meta. And, it, and there's even a script to skip the packages which are not Installer. updated. And, but I've, I've looked at the, the installer stuff to get some ideas. Okay, one of the blockers was PET, the original PET version, mostly written by, by Tincher, was, uh, well, was for SVN, basically. And now we have pet, pet instances with many numbers. Uh, maybe Ansgar, you can give a very short summary. There will be a dedicated PET buff tomorrow, but as far as the Debian, I think tomorrow, no? but as far as the Perl group is concerned. Yes, actually I uh, rewrote PET because it was not very easy to add support for different version control backends to the original PET. And well, I actually rewrote it two times, um, so the current version is now called PT3. And um, it's now mostly working. There are only minor things which need to be changed now. Um, well, the, the templates were actually uh, taken from the very first PT version, so it looks also uh, almost the same. The information is also, well, more or less the same. So, yeah, no need to get used to something totally different. Um, and the new page uh, is now PET Debian net and then slash package minus Perl slash PET dot CGI. I think it's not yet linked on our web page, but I can add a link later today. Mm -hmm. And it's not completely up to date, I think. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> and it's still called dot CGI, although it is no CGI anymore. <laughs> Good. I think that's. Uh, 
Ah, tomorrow at 12, okay. I think that's it for the, the overview of the conversion to Git. So I, I don't know if people have some questions about details, some resentments, objections, or proposals, or offer to help with a few uh, remaining pieces. I've, hello, I've been um, trying out a few packages in Git. Um, have we decided how to manage quilt patches with Git yet? That's a question for David. <laughs> The short answer is no, um, because I think it's enough to to for for this step count to, to get the things working in Git and to stay with our most uh, essentially not to change our, our patch management. But um, I think that uh, we can talk about it. One thing that uh, I I'm waiting on is I, I believe that uh, Guido Gunter is going to uh, provide in the next short time uh, similar functionality in git build package as exists in git package to uh, generate patches on the fly uh, and then we can consider whether that's the nice way to do things or not without forcing people to use a particular tool um, right now we would have to tell people to use git package and many people are already comfortable with using git build package so I think uh, the high level view is that we want to be as tool agnostic as possible um, and to adopt conventions about the structure of the repository but not about what tools you need to to use to work with it other than git the documentation at the moment says we can continue to use Quilt, which everyone knows, or this Git build, git build package patch Q might also be <laughs> helpful for those who can pronounce it, unlike me. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, actually, that's a good point that no one needs to know that you knew, use git build package patch Q a, as a local quilt, essentially. So if anybody wants to discuss that further, I'm happy. Okay, any other remarks, questions? Is there something on IRC? No one around? Okay. Well, so yeah, it seems that the old guys like me or Tincho have to now really adopt to Git. It's, it's imminent, maybe it's, it will happen today or tomorrow. So, yeah. After seeing the state of the Git transition, I'm rethinking about coming back. <laughs> 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 it's even possible, believe me. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm doing that uh, in that other place. <laughs> yeah, I guess we will have quite a few questions after the transition. But I know that there are enough people around to answer them, so we'll manage. Okay, so far for Git. Then let's look on our agenda again. In the discussion section, we had uh, one question, I think, that, that was from Ans Ansgar. Or Ansgar and me discussed it on IRC at some point. I don't know if it's still relevant after the, the transition. The, the, the handling of the removed packages, yeah. Okay. The question was sometimes packages are re removed from the, the archive and we also remove them from SVN, also from, from Git, and we are not really consistent in how we do this removal, so maybe we can fix the it. The problem was um, I would li uh, have liked to keep tags and branches in uh, SVN even when we remove a package, but when we move to Git I don't think this is relevant because we just remo uh, move the entire repository to a st uh, storage area where we keep removed packages. So it shouldn't apply anymore. Mm -hmm. But the idea would, would be to have some ethic or whatever, yes, uh, also in Git, where, where we just move the, the whole Yes, directory. for Git I would just uh, suggest to, when we remove a package, to move it to some different directory okay. um, and keep it there forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the difference with Amara is that uh, each uh, 
each package will only track uh, its own state. Yeah, right. So if you create a directory for archival for long term, no longer active, well, you can, it will still be there as a, this, uh, the same as it is in the subversion history. Mm -hmm. I just, <coughs> just wanted to say that for consistency, it would be good that you can still access it with MR and all the tools like we used to have in SBN, no? Okay. So we create some ethic or whatever directory and package removal means moving the foo.git directory there. Is this the consensus? Good. Okay. The Next thing here is, I um, don't know if this is really something where we have to go into great length to discuss it. It came up some, some days ago. Uh, Perl 6, they are now Rakuda and Perot, whatever, and Unstable. Uh, is Perl 6 in general or Perl 6 libraries a concern for us as the package Perl group, or are we only the package Perl 5 group? Should this be a separate team? I don't think we have to decide any, anything complicated, but just to, to get a feeling about it, where, where we should go in this direction. Hello, this might be, sounds kind of stupid, but what, what are the main differences between the stable and the unstable version of Perl? What do you mean by stable and unstable? Ah, Tim is already answering, good. Um, Perl, Perl 6 isn't really an unstable version of Perl. It's, it's, it's almost a completely different language from what I understand. So um, I haven't learned Perl 6 yet. Uh, I don't have any plans to. So um, as for packaging, I don't know whether CPAM modules can be used with Perl 6 in the same way. I imagine there's some compatibility thing going on. So it might even be that we should we should wait and see what what CPAN does. I mean, I, I feel like we're the CPAN packaging team, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and there will be some solution upstream. Okay, thank you. If I understand you correctly, that you then I agree with you that we'll, we'll just take a relaxed thing of not, not make decisions now, like we did with applications. Like see what happens and see what we can find out and. And we can always adjust it again later. I mean, when it starts emerging, mm -hmm. if anybody wants to package some Perl six libraries and try do it, and we'll see how that works out. Mm -hmm. Check it as it comes. I haven't uh, seen the stages of Perl six in the last times, uh, so I don't know about that too. But I think that we have. We have been pretty good and having a good communication with Upstream, and Upstream has been listening to us. And I think that maybe it's a good idea to try to be an early adopter to, to try to start playing at least with some packages to see how we integrate with CPAN, try to see what are the new conventions, and trying to give early feedback, because I think that's good for them and for us. Quick note from IRC, Dominic thinks that there is no need of separate team for Pro 6. There's no need to? Of, a, of separate team okay. for managing Pro 6 models. Yeah, I guess I wants to, he wants to have 175 co-maintainers. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I see the that's point. That's a nice thing to have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's actually Dominique and, and Alessandro are the ones who have been working on, on Rakuro and, and Parrot lately. They are also both members of the Perl group, so I guess it will <laughs> it will be connected anyway. But yeah, Jonas, I, I share what what you said. I think we can be <laughs> relaxed and try and and see what happens. And if if it's a mess to have everything together, then we can always split it or, or something. Okay. Yeah, it's so easy with Git. Everything will be fine with Git. <laughs> right. And we have the full support of all governments of the world, I know. Okay, so Perl 6, so far, so good. 
Another thing which I have not written here, and there's, there's not really anything to, to discuss, uh, but, but still, it's Perl 5.14, and Dom Dominic has, the other Dominic, not Dominique, but Dominic, has, has sent a mail to the, to the list yesterday about the state of, of 5.14. If I remember correctly, it, it, well, it is an experimental. They are tracking some bugs that are still around, which I think are not really many. And if I remember correctly, they would like to throw it into unstable in some weeks. Was it some weeks, his words? I think so. Yeah, I, I guess that the last transition to 5.12 went, went Quite fine. So, yeah, but but in general, there, there was not not much. <coughs> uh, it was not like five ten. Yeah. Question of RC. Uh, well, okay. I'll just ask it. And the question is: Are there any plans to? move to a more recent build from testing to stable. That's a more recent build of the Perl package, I think. Well, upgrading Perl and stable is basically not possible, even uh, uploading to squeeze backports, because um, there are many packages that will break, and this includes quite a lot of packages in the um, base system. And um, even to get it installable, it would need um, rebuilds of um, almost every XS module for Perl. So this is not feasible to do for a, either a stable update, which, uh, well, or even for just Swiss backports. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Oof. Time is time is flying a bit. We have 11, one, uh, 11 more minutes left, so we can either take a quick look at those items that are still on the page, which are in the category uh, things to do <laughs> tasks. Maybe there's something that someone wants to wants to claim and to work on, or we can also use the time if there are some other things which are not mentioned anywhere, which someone would like to discuss, which would be important, and I'm not aware of. Is there anything we need to discuss instead of looking at these tasks? Maybe it's a non-issue. I hope it is a non-issue, but uh, let me just try raise it anyway. I, I use CDPS, and uh, I hope that no one is really feeling uh, that it's a big problem. <laughs> Uh, it was there was one discussion on IRC uh, relatively recently that someone was uh, reluctant to to touch any of it, and I was trying to say, hey, it should be designed so that you don't break anything uh, by, by by working on normal methods. So people are welcome to work on the packages that are using CDBS for for for, for updating things, even if there's a control.in file, you could still. Uh, automate across many packages to touch the control files. When I then later come around to, to do the updates, I double check if there's an inconsistency between the two files, things like that. So I'm just asking around if, if, if anybody feels more than... It's, it's fine that you just avoid the packages and, and, and poke me every time you stumble on CDBS. It's fine with me. But it's also fine if you uh, try mess with my packages, it's, oh, my packages, with these CDBS packages. It's fine with me too. So if anybody is feeling that this is, this is too awkward, this is slowing people too much down, that I'm working on CDBS, then that's, I'm just raising it here, then we can, can talk about that. But that's just saying ahead that I'm not going to switch to uh, using another uh, packaging system at the moment. That's not the, the, so you don't, the issue is not, do you want to convince me to do something else? <laughs> the issue is, is it, is it too hurtful for the, for the teamwork? that they are, they are, these packages are lying there, so maybe I should move them out of there, or should I pass them on to you, some of them, things like that. Or is it a problem? Can it be a problem? Do you feel anything like that? So. so one of my favorite hobbies is teasing Jonas about CDBS. 
Um, <laughs> but actually, I'm using it in some other places. I'm using it for Racket right now because I inherited it. And so I'm getting a little bit familiar with CDBS. So if you can't find Jonas, then you can try me and maybe I can. I won't answer questions about CDBS, but probably I can try. So, so. Uh, so before you despair, so first you can try Jonas, and then you can also try me. I don't mind giving it a, a little bit of effort towards these kind of things. First of all, a comment about CDBS is not so bad as it seems. I've been, <laughs> I've been using it too, and then I switched to the H back, but it's not so bad. Anyway, what I wanted to say is a related topic is that <clears throat> uh, it used to be when I was around all the time that it was a good place to refer newbies to the pair group, and I think it's probably still the same thing, and I think it's could be a nice thing to do since there is other groups trying to to make life easier for newbies and trying to guide them a little, maybe to make a little more um, noticeable the group as a good place for beginners because mm -hmm. I think it's still probably a good idea. Yeah, I totally agree. And luckily we, we get newbies quite quite often still. But yeah, advertising it a bit more wouldn't hurt. But are, are there any more answers to, to Jonas' question? Well, my answer is still is still the same. I'm I'm fine with it. I know these are special packages, but it, I'm totally okay with having them there. I think it's a good reminder to have it, this as a unofficial group policy. There are packages which have Jonas and CDPS, and they are supposed to stay as CDPS, and and everyone is happy. Yeah, but, but and it's with this addition that well, that does not mean. Don't touch. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, that's what mm -hmm. I wanted to emphasize. Mm -hmm. that, uh, please do touch. Please do mess. Also, if you don't want to learn a lot of CDBS, it doesn't mean that if you touch it, then I'm gonna, gonna run, hunt you down and t teach you CDBS, something like that. You're, you're, <laughs> you're welcome to not be infected by CDBS, okay? <laughs> Thank you. Good. Um, any other spontaneous topics? Ah, Tim? Mm -hmm. Um, how do we, I don't know if we have a policy about how we interact with Debian developers who aren't in the group because sometimes I find that um, I find bugs which are in other Perl modules in Debian which I need to depend on and do we have something, do we have some guidelines we could perhaps document about um, uh, doing NMUs of, of um, other oh. developers' packages, or? Uh, in the use of packages which are not maintained by us? Yes. But which yes. we need, yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> I'm not aware of any specific policy we have, so I think it's the general Debian NMU policies. Do, do we need a special policy? Is that what you're feeling? I. I don't know. I think it's just just a documentation thing, just for um, that. I've I've run into this once or twice, and I I don't know what other people are doing. Whether whether we just just wait for the maintainer to fix their bugs before we do our work, or or do we actually go ahead and? Maybe that's what also what what, uh, what Gregor also was saying that that. We, Debian in general has has patterns and styles of, of how you deal with NMUs. You call it an NMU yourself, and then, and and as I feel the late, the, late, the recent years, it's been tightening more up. That it's, it's become more okay to do uh, more and more aggressive NMUs. And I'm just thinking that I, I feel personally that we need no special uh, uh, documentation for that in in, in the Perl group. I mean, we are all uh, involved in Debian, and, and, uh, and as, a, as a larger thing, if, if you <coughs> think of, of newbies, or for instance, then just one line in, in the Perl documentation referring to whatever is the proper place in, in general Debian, as I see it. Yeah. I also think we, need, we don't need something special, but it might be a good reminder to say we can't do this. I also know it, know it from myself that I've been waiting for six months for some, some 
want to update this package, and, which is a bit useless. Uh, I just wanted to remind people that uh, we can do NMUs even for new upstream versions, uh, so there's no reason to not NMU even if it's just a wish list bug, like a new upstream version which we need for some other package. But of course you should follow the user, uh, usual policies, so it's just an NMU if the maintainer does not react. Yeah, and also as a reminder often it helps to invite people either to join the group or to hand over their package. I know sometimes it doesn't work and that's when we, are, when we have to decide, yeah. Okay. Uh, one mm -hmm. last question, maybe, uh, from Dominic. He seeks uh, feedback for using his config edit tool when maintaining packages. Is it good, bad, ich. whatever? I can't. <laughs> Dominic, the author of uh, Config Edit Tool, seeks feedback about using that tool ah. for uh, maintaining packages. What's missing? What's useful? Mm -hmm. So uh, con Config Edit, the script which is in the in Config model, has really grown some great features in the last months for updating Debian co control, updating Debian copyright file. And yes, I think we should, we should really use it more. I, ho I still hope that we can somehow hook it up into either dhmake pearls refresh command or into this, pack, the, into this ugly package check script so I don't have to remember to run it separately and type the long command or grab it from the shell history. Yeah, that's uh, actually what I don't like about it. The, the command line is too long. The command line is too yeah, long. Yeah, yeah. You, you have to write config edit and then specify the model itself, which is a couple of words. And yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My fingers <laughs> resist to that. <laughs> I know what you mean. Okay, that was not Tincher. So we have one more minute left. Uh. <laughs> 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 I'm <re> yes. <laughs> okay, so I guess we won't go th through all of the items on the on the task page. Maybe we can put it in the minutes that people are invited to take a look at at them and grab some. Some are already claimed. Well, the last thing I'd like to stress is <coughs> uh, is forwarding patches upstream. I know I'm not the only one who's not really good at this, so I, I will try to improve my own behavior, but I also invite others to forward more, more patches. <coughs> right. Use the, the Dep3 headers for the patches. And we now have tools that make it rather easy. There's this patch edit <coughs> script from Josef. I think it's already a year old or something, but it's not, probably not well known. Makes it very easy to, to edit the, the patch headers. And this forward patch and forward bug scripts written by, by Alessandro uh, are not perfect, but the forward patch is, is doing its job. So I've, I've, I've spent uh, an afternoon last week for forwarding patches. It's really just a few keystrokes and then paste the URL and commit it and, and it's done. And I've received quite a few responses from, from CPEN authors who said, yeah, thanks, and, and I've already committed it. And, and great. It was just that, that I got bored after some time because it's always the same and it's so easy. But um, yeah, maybe we can take a, a common effort and get those patches out. Good. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, some ideas. So we should do it, we should work on it. But I think we're, we're running out of time. Is there some last, famous last words someone wants to say to conclude the buff? Well, otherwise I would just like to say thanks for coming, but long live SVN. Long live SVN. <laughs> <laughs> for us boring old fats. Long live, long live SVN. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and, and, and thanks, thanks for being such a great team. I really enjoy it and um, yeah.